Well, hello, forensic accountants. This is the update to my March 2018 video. We are going to be doing Benford's Law Analysis in our no packages. So this is our studio, just a screenshot. This is the Dropbox folder, and I will give you um, the link to the folder in the description of the video. We have some practice files for uh, Excel, we have the file that is going to do the graphing for us. We have the R file, and we have this Word document that you're looking at right now. We are going to be actually analyzing the first two digits. I just show you the first digit table because it's smaller and uh, maybe more familiar. Here we go. The first digits, one through nine. This is the count. And of course, I'm going to show you how to calculate this. This is the count. How many numbers began with a 1? How many numbers began with a 9? This is the actual proportion. The count divided by the total number of records. In this case, 3,143. This is the Benford's Law expected proportion. The difference, actual minus Benford. The absolute value of the difference negative numbers become positive. The mean absolute deviation, which I'm going to use to assess conformity. And this is my Z or my Z statistic, which tells me whether my difference is statistically significant at the 5% level. This is what I'm aiming for. A first two digit graph going from 10 to 99. These are the Benford's law proportions. These are the actual proportions. And indeed, this is quite a good fit. R. File. Recent files. This is the one that you have in the Dropbox. Here we go. I'm going to assume that you're familiar with some of these things like options. No scientific notation. Thank you very much. Over here we go. Set working directory. This is in file. I'm going to get my data straight from this website. But uh, this data set is in the um, folder as well. And now, here we go. My table is going to be called people. And I'm going to read this file. Let's just go see what is in this file. It is actually a CSV version of this. County populations 2010. I have the state identifier, a county number a county name, the area in square miles, and the population according to the 2010 census. This goes all the way down 3,143 records. And I'm going to test this against Benford's Law. I saved this file as a CSV file, and that's the file that I'm going to read. Just remember, when you save as a CSV file, all these commas have to disappear, as do any pound signs from any formatting. So, it's putting it in. People, read the CSV file. It does have headers. Now I'm doing some checks and balances. I want to know whether the field people 2010 is numeric. It's going to tell me it's integer. That's good. I just want to know what the field area is. Um, and it's going to come back numeric as well. If my field was not numeric, I'm changing it to numeric over here. I want to view the table and I want to give you to give me the column names. This is just for me to know that I'm starting the process off correctly. And it's a little tricky to get the right one here. Here we go. Uh, highlighted that. Run. Beautiful. Here's my environment. I have my table, people, that many records, that many fields. Here it is, people 2010. I can see that it's numeric. It's right justified. Area, name, number, state. It's looking good. People, people are, people are integer. Area is numeric. Things seem to be looking good. The column names, I have all five over there. Everything is looking good so far. 
Now I'm going to be doing a few checks with some uh, descriptive statistics, just something simple. Just want to know that things are running good. I want uh, the descriptive statistics, and here we go. I have the maximum, minimum, total. And if I have any check figures, I want to run these by and see that they agree. I want to know that, that I've read the file correctly. I'm still doing some summary checks. Be careful when you highlight. You don't want to pull uh, characters from the one. Here we go. I now want to look at the structure. That's what SDR is. The structure of this table called people. I want a summary, which is going to give me some cutoff values, first quartile and the like. And in this command, I'm going to delete all records less than one penny. Um, here we go. Minus people. And indeed, it's going to take out any records less than one penny. In the book, I talk about whether we should delete numbers less than one penny or less than 10. You can delete less than 100 if you like. But this number needs to be an integer power of 10. 10 to the power minus 2 or 10 to the power 0, 10 to the power 1 and the like. So let's just run this. Here we go. Uh, this is, I'm getting the structure over here. There is structure people. It's a data frame. It's giving me some values to go by here. I just want to know that everything is good before I run it. Summary. This is a nice command. Minimum up to the maximum. And it doesn't tell me that it's deleted it, but it has deleted all the numbers less than one penny. In this case, I don't have any numbers less than one penny. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all numbers between one penny and 10 by 1000 so that I move the decimal point to the right and my digits move to the left so that when I extract the first digits, I don't end up with a decimal point uh, upsetting my little party. I'm going to run this. There are no numbers between 1 cent and 10, so nothing's actually going to happen here, but it will in the next. Um... Now, here we go. Every time I grab here, it wants to actually move things around, so just be careful. Now, over here, I calculate the first two digits of every number. I use the substring command. Start in the first position and go the first two characters that you see. This is actually <coughs> a text field, so I change it back to numeric over here. And then I count how many of each <coughs> first two digits I have. I put it into a nice data frame, and this is, this is the heart of it. And watch how fast we're actually going to execute for 3,000 numbers. There was no delay over there. <clears throat> and I have my really important things in this thing called first two digit count, but watch what's happened here. I have inconvenient field names. <clears throat> so R gave it these field names. I'm not too thrilled with them. So over here we rename those fields and control Z. Um, I rename these fields. Let's run. <clears throat> And again, if I click on first two digit count, or I go look up here, the field names have become <clears throat> much more manageable. Now, something could happen in that <clears throat> I have 129 numbers beginning with one zero, but I might have no numbers beginning with 93. In which case, right at the bottom here, it's going to count the 92s, it's going to count the 94s, but it can't really count the 93s because there are none of them, in which case I'm not going to have 90 first two digits. I'm going to have 89 of them. And what I'm doing over here is I'm just doing a little check. Do we have a count of 90? And, <clears throat> and if I add all these up together, do I actually get a total of 4,905. And if, if, if these two conditions are satisfied, 
everything is probably working quite well. Otherwise, I want this warning. So it's actually going to do a very quick check here. And I don't get any warning below. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go in and start creating this Benford table. So I'll join them at the end. Here we go. I combine them over there. Sorry about that. There we go. So the first two digits get a vector 10 to 99. These are the counts, and we saw the counts right up there. Total OBS. How many records do I have? In this case, 3,143. It doesn't show it here. <clears throat> there it does. The actual proportion, the count divided by total OBS. The Benford proportion, the Benford's Law formula. The difference, actual minus Benford. The absolute difference, give me the absolute value of the difference. And here I'm calculating the Z statistic in two steps. Here we go. You can see I'm rounding to six digits. And um, I'll go back to the Word document rather. Here it is. Measuring conformity using the Z statistic. I'm going to be calculating this. But I have a big wrinkle here, minus 1 over 2n. The term is a continuity correction term and is only used when it is smaller than the first term. So this would become unwieldy to program. So all I did was I said, hey, I'm going to subtract it anyway. And then if the z statistic is negative, I'm going to turn it into a zero. <clears throat> this is a bit of a shortcut. I'm going to be off. I'm going to be off by an average, maybe 0 0.001 or 0 0.002, but it makes this so much easier. Um, I'm just going to run it that way, and I'll show you a little workaround if you like. I'm going to run them. run execution speed phenomenal good job again i do some checks over here i need to combine all these so that i get a nice data frame or a table and i want to see the first five records the last five records and i want to see the structure and i want a little summary over here this is maybe superfluous but they run so quickly here we go I can see the first five records. Everything's looking good. I can see the last five records. I don't see any warnings. The structure, I get a sort of a full report as to what's happening over there. And again, I get a summary of the count, the smallest count, the largest count, and so on. Two more things to do. I need to calculate the mean absolute deviation. I need to see what my conclusion is, and I need to write my results to a CSV file. So this mean absolute deviation here, I'm calculating the mean absolute deviation, and then I'm going to this table, first two digits, and I'm getting the conclusion, close conformity, that one, that one, or one of these. I'm getting one of these four conclusions. And it's rather nifty over here. This is an if statement telling it to find what conclusion is correct. And cat means give me just a statement. Our conclusion is, and this means write the results out to a file. I'm going to run. And here it is. Our conclusion is acceptable conformity. It has written the results out to a file, and in my case, it has gone here. And let's go down to R, data. Here it is. It has just run it. There we go. I have these results. I have the counts. I have the slightly incorrect Z. 
But what I can do is I can take these counts. I really just need to take the counts. I need can do a copy. I can go to that file called the Negrini cycle. Here it is. We go back into Dropbox. And I can take the counts and I can deposit them here. J3 downwards. And indeed, the rest of this whole Negrini cycle will be incorrect, but this table will now be correct with the Z statistics perfectly calculated, and my graph will be in first two. I'm going to zoom it down a little bit. There we go. We actually have exactly the result that we're aiming for right over here. So I have the table in tables. I have the graph in first two. And I'm done. I'm going to zoom this down a little bit and go down. And now I'm going to go, I'm still in R. This is the purchasing card data in my book, Forensic Analytics. Uh, this purchasing card data is run through about 10 chapters. And uh, I'm just going to show you how to analyze the purchasing card data in, X, in uh, R. And then we're done. So. I can go home and home and we can see we have this number of rows um, widen it a bit there we have this number of rows this is the data and I'm going to analyze it in R you can see that it's called 2010C I kept the name as close as possible I even called this people 2010 it should be amount but if I call it people 2010, the R code will execute. If you want to call it amount, be my guest, but you have to change the R code. So I'm going here. I have to make one little check. I cannot have this file open if I'm going to write it again. So it needs to be closed. Otherwise, R gets very unhappy when it has to overwrite an open file. So I'm going to clean this out. Edit clear console environment sweep clean history clean the code is good but I need to change the code here so I'm not using the in file statement over here anymore the pound sign means now it's just a comment I need to this is no longer a comment, but this is. And that file was not called 2010A. It was, I can leave it as A over there, but it was called 2010C. Here we go. And so it's going to read the 2010C instead of 2010A. And let's watch the um, speed of execution. I'm going to close these and I'm going to close these. Everything will still be called people and it will be your job to change things to amount if you like or you can just call it people 2010 and know that it's going to work. Um, 193,000 records. I think it's 186,000 after we delete all the numbers less than one penny. Uh, execution speed. You can get your stopwatch ready. Run. Done. Everything written out. I'm thinking maybe one second. Now we have people, although we really just have amounts over here, 185,780 records. Um, we can go down here. We have the mean absolute deviation. Uh, not so good. Our conclusion is non-conformity. It's written it out to a file. I do need to check here and see that everything is blue and that everything is good. I don't see any error, error messages or warnings. Structure looks good. Renamed. No warnings over here. This is good. I can see the top five of my table. Everything looks fine. 
the bottom five this is good no warnings about uh, first two digits not being there conclusion not conformity it's written it out to that excel file let's go here i need to be not in r but i need to be in c i need to be wherever that work uh, working directory was here it is data and let's go benford first two open here it is now i have a pretty decent table of here the z statistics will be slightly off however as the number of records gets bigger like 200,000, remember it's subtracting minus one over two n uh, that little adjustment becomes smaller and smaller as the number of records gets bigger and bigger so here we go oops i wanted the counts I have the counts over here. Copy. Where's that Negrini cycle? I can just override it here. Paste. The new counts, everything has been recalculated. First two digit graph. There she is. Uh, execution time one second. Pasting into Excel, I don't know, a minute. And now I'm at the point that I have exactly this graph which matches with this graph in the book. It just doesn't point to the three largest Z statistics. And the way I can get the three largest Z statistics quite easily, I can go into over here and go back to the table. I can go to the Z statistics here. I can do home conditional formatting top bottom rules you have to click top 10 but you can change top 10 to top three and now in red i have the three largest z statistics identified it's the first two digits 24 47 and 50 and in the next chapter chapter five i talk about how we are actually going to use this so 24 47 50. Um, this is how we do everything in R. No packages, nothing in the library, just using R base. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I've enjoyed uh, writing the code and sharing it with you. And so from me to you, it's thank you very much, and I'll say goodbye at 23. Bye.